Okay, I just want to make this uh, really brief recording. So last night again, I prayed um, for truth and clarity. And again, I prayed that I didn't care what it looked like. I didn't care what the answer was. I wanted to have the truth without any of my thoughts, beliefs, um, preconceived ideas put in there. And today I'm searching the Bible for the story of Abraham and Isaac because that is what I'm inspired to look at today. Um, was the first story from the Bible that really, really caused a lot of conflict in me. Um, it was one of those things that when I heard it as a child, I was twisted up and immediately said, that's not my father. That's not my father. Um, today, I am impressed that I am to delve into that story a bit. And I'm already getting um, what I would call like downloads of information, um, different pictures and understandings, different processes and why this may have come to pass. Um, while looking at the Bible, I happened to be flipping through the pages and <laughs> uh, I came to Isaiah 65. Um, and at the, this is a King James version. I believe it's a new King James version. Um, large print right at the top of the page. It says righteousness of God's judgment. Okay. And I was like, oh, here we go. So <clears throat> Isaiah 65 says, I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that was not called by my name. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, according to their own thoughts, a people who provoke me to anger continually to my face, who sacrifice in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick who sit among the graves and spend the night in the tombs, who eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am holier than you. These are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will repay, even repay into their bosom, your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, says the Lord, who have burned incense on the mountains and blasphemed on me, blasphemed, blasphemed me on the hills. Therefore, I will measure their former work into their bosom. Okay, well, <laughs> right there, there's a lot of information just in that one <laughs> section. Okay. So, <laughs> I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. Okay. The first thing that hits me in that little bit right there is no. Hmm. When we seek God, when we seek that which is divine, righteousness. What we are truly seeking, if it is truly God we are seeking, is love. Um, when we start to put <laughs> other concepts on what God is, <laughs> how God is, um, we're going to find something that's not God. Okay? That's really simple. You set your intent. And if your intent is centered around your mind and what you think God is, you will find that God. It's not really God, but that's, we find what we seek. Okay. If, if you know God to be love, that is the God you will find. You will find the absolute love. You will find truth. If you look for God or have an opening, because, because this being says here, I was sought by those who do not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me, okay? Um, these words have been attributed to God, but it's not my father. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not my father, okay? Because my father is divine love. 
And this being here is really being upfront and telling anyone who's reading this what you're going to find. That if you continue in these practices, you do these things and you seek God, your heart is centered around these things that are not of God. And so the God that you find is not going to be the Holy Father of love. Okay. All right. So, um, and I'm sorry if that sounds <laughs> really, it sounds really awful, doesn't it? But it's, it is very simple. And I do appreciate this, this being for being as upfront as they were. Um, th those who provoke me, people who provoke me to anger continually to my faith. Okay, listen, divine love knows no anger. <laughs> Anger's, anger is not a trait of divine love. Anger is the opposite. Anger stems from fear. Fear is the opposite of love. Okay, so you have to choose. You either believe in a father in heaven, a divine creator, a divine infinite creator that is love or not. If you believe in a divine creator that is love, you need to look at everything that you once believed to be true. There are some major, major misconceptions in this. And, and I got overexcited. And the phone fell down. Okay, listen. Back to this. I really need to get a better setup than this. This little balancing act isn't working so good. Okay. So I'll just hold it. <laughs> All right. So, and and the references made here, the things that this this being this being found to be um, an abomination. Okay. I mean, this entity that's speaking here says about sacrificing in gardens. That's true. Bloodletting, uh, you know, the Christ letters speak of that. Bloodletting, uh, animal sacrifice, human sacrifice. Anytime that you spill blood in the name of God, that is not God you're serving. Okay? It's really simple. It's really simple. Um, so... <laughs> I, who sit among the graves and spend the night in the tombs. Uh, so what might that be? That could, that could be referring to many things. It could be referring to lusting over something that's gone. It could actually be referring to seances. I mean, those practices can be very dangerous if you're not a more enlightened person. If there are, there are people, there are mediums, there are people that do this work and they do it in love and their intent is for the best outcome for everyone involved. Um, but, but they, those people who do that work are very aware that they must take very special precautions because when we, even when we pray, okay, even when we pray, we must have the proper intent. Um, we, we can't find God if we are in the way. We can't reach God who is absolute love if our personalities are obstructing the path. Okay? So it is a real willingness to let go of everything that is earthly. Earthly. Um, it is getting out of the mind um, and coming from the heart and coming really coming from that place where I, I give myself I give myself to you I give myself to you father to show me what is real to show me what is true okay um, and this and this entity speaks of things that this being finds abominable great I agree with a lot of these things. So on some level, this person and I could be friends. You know, I agree that animal sacrifice or sacrificing or the spilling of blood to God is an abomination. I agree with that. Um, I eat meat, so I don't have a problem with eating the flesh of animals because I do eat meat. But obviously this being thinks it's bad. Um, the people who say I am holier than you. <laughs> 
We see that everywhere, don't we? Don't we see that everywhere in our world? We see it from this religion pointing out the flaws in that religion. And, you know, and I'm guilty of it to a point myself. Because all I can say is what I know, what I know is God is love. God is love. God is love. And anything that contradicts that about my Heavenly Father, I'm not, I'm not going to criticize a person for believing that because I know, I know why they believe it. I see how these things are written and I understand the programming involved in this. I understand it. Um, and I'm going to get into that on the video that I do about the story of Abraham and Isaac because I'm already being shown some things um, from a karmic perspective that have influenced our planet for a very long time. Um, sometimes these, sometimes these entities who <laughs> think they're, I'm sorry, think they're so much better than we are because they're more enlightened and to a degree they are because they really know, they know our real history and they get it in their heads that they're going to help they're going to help and they're going to come down here and they're going to help us. And how they help us is sometimes, sometimes they bring some pretty ugly stuff to the planet. Um, like the Holocaust, for example, they bring, bring some really ugly stuff to the planet and they think, Hey, you know, if, and, and they, and they decide this before they incarnate into a human body. And they say, let's, you know, let's, um, we'll do this really awful, awful thing. I'll play the bad guy, you play the good guy, and we're going to go down and we're going to do this horrible thing, and it will wake everybody up. It's not working. It's not working. I'm sorry, but I understand that sometimes the best aspects of human, what it is to be human, come out in the most tragic of times. Yes. But it also traumatizes to the point that we, are, we have been in this perpetual loop of misunderstanding and misconception. And I think that's why I'm here and I think that's why others like me are here. Because... <laughs> It has to stop. So anyway, okay, on more about this. All right. So this is a great caution to to not raise ourselves above above others in mind, um, to not be judgmental and critical of others. Yes. Um so what does that look like? That looks like me putting this video out and telling you God is love and to question anything that is in opposition to that. Any message that comes in that says God is anything else, something isn't right there. And we need to question that. Um, but it also looks like I understand I empathize and I am compassionate because I know why so many believe what they believe. I see how they have been led in that direction. I see how the information has appealed to some of the egoic tendencies of protection and fear. Um, it ha These things have played very well into many of the frailties of being human from a mental perspective, you know? So, um, the part about, and this is really interesting too, because, you know, I was, I was speaking before about the, who sit, who sit among the graves and spend the night in the tombs. This can also be referring to how we lament over the past, what we think the past is. And even Christ himself said, to us about living today because tomorrow will have its own worries, you know, um, not bringing yesterday into today. And that's another thing that speaks to me from that is, is, you know, you sit among the graves, you lament about the past, things that have been lost or are gone. We allow 
so much anger and hatred. Some people can come, become consumed by this. Um, or or if, if someone passed in a very aggressive way and or someone else was responsible for the ending of that life, how we may harden our hearts and become hateful and spiteful because of that. And that's what speaks to me in this. This speaks to me more of, of coveting the past than it does an actual seance <laughs> or ceremony over spirit. Um, so the sacrifices I covered, there was one, I wanted to find this about the altars, the altars of brick, because that, as I saw that picture in my mind, and I'm not seeing it right now, but I know I already read it. So, oh yes, here, who, who and burn incense on altars of brick. So something that I read in the Christ letters recently, Christ was speaking about how many have become so hardened in their rigid in their belief systems that it is like rock impenetrable it is like rock erecting armor around a belief system is dangerous if any of that is incorrect so once you know not being able to feel and be open to higher levels, higher is not really the right word, more loving understanding, um, being comfortable in that place of my belief structure and this feels comfortable to me. Well, I'm going to tell you when I started down this path of love, it was not comfortable. And even it's, it's more comfortable today because I've been doing it longer. In the beginning, I had huge struggles with this. I really liked the idea that God was going to condemn and, and torture people who did horrific, what I deemed as horrific things. That was really comfortable for me. It felt like there would be, you know, that justice would be done. And when I stood back and looked at, do I really want what I really want to cause the suffering of another human being? even if they did terrible things, is that who I want to be? Is that who Christ was, is? It is not an easy path. The truth is not an easy path when we have been programmed to believe something else. And we have found comfort in in the swift blade. We have found comfort in the sharp, the sharp blade. We have found comfort in the spilling of blood. We have acclimated to that mm, approach. So anyway, that, that really popped itself out at me and I wanted to put that in here because <laughs> maybe I'll write about it at some point. But I found it really interesting that even in that, you know, this, this person, and I'm going to say person, this being is right up front and says, I'm not, I'm not God, but, but the people who heard this voice, this message, attributed it to God. I think that's really interesting. That's all for now. I'll be back.